What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm doing something a little bit crazy and that is show you guys my entire sneaker collection which consists of like a hundred and five or six sneakers which is a lot more than I expected if I'm completely honest because I always thought I had maybe like 50 to 60. While going through my shoes I actually found some stuff that I didn't remember that I had and some of it was pretty insane like some pretty hype stuff, some pretty cool and sentimental stuff so I'm really excited to show you guys what I have. I don't live in a big place, I live in an apartment and a hundred something pairs is way too many to have so the plan is after this video I'm gonna start getting rid of as many pairs as I can. And the way I'm planning to do that is to actually list a bunch of pairs on my website sethfowlerstore.com there's a link down in the description below and then for the pairs I can't sell I'm just gonna donate them and I'm gonna try and get my collection to around 30 to 40 pairs which is still a lot but a lot less than 100 so if you want to check out the pairs that are available again click the link at the top of the description and while you're down there might as well hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet so with all of that out of the way let's get into my sneaker collection I sort of have these shoes organized from like everyday to basketball to like special lifestyle then to like hype stuff I mean there's hype stuff all the way throughout but there's sort of an order I don't know if it's gonna work well for this video so I might switch some things around in editing why don't we start with two pairs that aren't technically sneakers, my slides. Of course, everyone's got to have a pair of slides in their collection. I've got a pair of Adidas slides and then some Sandal Boy slides. These were actually a gift from Fran Elation, so huge thank you to you for these because these are awesome. Next up, every New Yorker has a pair of Tims. The first is your standard wheat pair, and then I've also got a black pair which has this waterproof lining around the top. I kind of dig it because it's a little bit shorter and lower profile, and you can sort of roll it down if you need to. I'm not exactly sure why you would. I only wear this when I need to like keep out all the water and snow, so I definitely wouldn't be rolling down the top. Next up, I've got a fake pair of shoes that I just haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with. These fake Amazon Yeezys. Everything about this pair sucks. It was like 25 bucks. It wasn't even worth the 25 bucks. I don't know why I bought it. I did end up doing a video on it. And if you guys want to check out any of my other fake Yeezy videos, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. And then rounding off the knockoff sneaker collection, you've got the Steve Madden Flex. I just did a video on these. These are, of course, the Balenciaga Speed Trainer knockoffs. These suck in every way. They're not comfortable. They don't look good. I mean, they just suck. This is a pair that I just literally haven't gotten around to returning yet, but it is 100% going back to the store. Next up, we're getting into my Vans, and unfortunately, I only actually have two pairs at the moment, which is surprising because I used to have like 20 pairs, but this is by far my most worn pair of Vans. It's a pair of Burgundy Eras. I really love this shoe. I think it looks great. It also has a bunch of dog hair on it, and I don't have a dog, so I don't know what the deal is with that. And then the second pair of Vans right here is actually one of my first custom pairs of shoes ever, and it's actually the paint's rubbing off my fingers. But as you guys can see, it's Galaxy themed because at the time, I think the Galaxy phone posits just came out, so everyone was asking for Galaxy Customs. So this was just sort of a test pair. It's like super, super stiff because I painted on it like five or six different times, trying different kinds of galaxy prints but you know my sneaker channel and Instagram were started because I used to be Fowler customs and I used to do custom shoes so I guess this has like some meaning to me and it's not a pair that I ever really plan on giving up I do have to wash my hands though oh really quick I actually do have technically I guess another van it's not really a pair of vans hold on I'll show you guys Ugh. So, um, like I said, I used to work at Vans, and I helped open the Columbia Mall store, and they had these two giant shoes in the window that were made up of, like, foam and plastic and things like that. So, uh, I, I asked if I could have one. I don't know why, but I did. And, uh, you know, seven to eight years later, this is what's left over. And I don't know why I still have it, because I literally use it for nothing. It just kind of sits against my wall. But... There you go. I've actually tried to get rid of this multiple times and somehow it's still with me. Like literally I've tried to throw this out multiple times and for some reason it just keeps showing up. Could be haunted, I'm not sure, but I've kind of given up on trying to get rid of it because by this point, like, it just, it's never gonna happen. So, moving on, the next brand that I have sneakers from is a brand new basketball performance sneaker brand called Q4. Maybe six to eight months into my YouTube career, they sent me three pairs of shoes, and I've gotta say, for a brand new performance basketball brand, they're actually pretty decent performers. So jumping into the first one, we've got the Q4495 Low. I've gotta be honest, this is probably my least favorite out of the three, mainly because of the way it looks, but also, it's just, like, probably the least comfortable in my opinion. However, interestingly enough, the NBA players who actually play for Q4 prefer this shoe, and I'm not sure why. Next up is the Specialist in Black Aster, and I think this is probably the sleekest shoe in their entire lineup. And then rounding off the Q4 performance sneakers, we've got the Q4 Millennium High. Interestingly enough, the industrial designer who started Q4 is actually a good friend of a friend of mine I used to work with. So first of all, a huge shout out to him because I really respect what he's doing. I'm actually kind of jealous because starting his own shoe line has always been sort of a dream of mine. But seriously, he's killing it. This shoe, the Millennium High, is my 
favorite on court by far. I think it's an excellent sneaker. It fits great. It performs really well. Next up, we've got one of my only leaning shoes, courtesy of IMTC2. This is the Leaning Way of Wade 5. Leaning might not be my favorite performance basketball brand, and this shoe in particular, I just didn't love the way that it felt on court. But if you're just wearing this for lifestyle, I think it's a really interesting shoe, and I really love the gold accents on the tongue and on the heel. Continuing on into Adidas basketball, the first shoe in that category is the Adidas Crazy Explosive. You guys know my channel. I don't really do too many performance reviews. I've done them in the past, but out of all the shoes that I've tested and out of what I've heard from pretty much every other basketball channel on YouTube, this is one of the best. As you could probably guess, I also have the Crazy Explosive in the low top version and the last Crazy Explosive in my collection and also I think one of the last Crazy Explosives to ever be produced, the Crazy Explosive 2017. And then finally, rounding off my Adidas basketball sneakers, my favorite Adidas basketball sneaker that I've ever worn, the Dame 2 in the static colorway. The Dame 2 is one of my favorite basketball sneakers of all time and that's just because it's such a well-rounded shoe and it retails for 105 bucks. It did retail for 105 bucks. They don't make these guys anymore. Now moving into Nike basketball, the first shoe I have in that category is the Kyrie 2. I don't remember what the name of this colorway is, but it's a really nice blue. I know it's not the Duke colorway because the Duke shoe did come out a little bit later, but is it the Brotherhood? It's the Brotherhood colorway, that's what it is. Awesome shoe overall, and the Kyrie 4 is also a great basketball sneaker, so I might have to pick that pair up a little bit down the road. Now moving on to some of the more hype stuff, we've got the Off-White Nike Hyperdunk. The Hyperdunk is a great performer on court. Obviously, the Off-White pair, not a lot of people playing because it's Off-White. I got super lucky on this pair. I just walked into Kith, and there happened to be like four or five pairs left over that people didn't pick up the week before, and they put them out in shelves like an hour before I got there. So I was able to grab a pair in my size, which is crazy. I've gotta be honest, even though I really love this shoe around this toe area here for whatever reason it just digs into my left foot and I'm not sure why it only digs into my left foot and not my right foot but because of that I've only worn this pair like maybe two times still a great shoe though next up is definitely a more sentimental pair for me it's the KD6 Aunt Pearl this pair was made to honor the memory of Katie's Aunt Pearl he lost her to cancer which is also how I lost my mom back in 2016 and I think that's one of the main reasons I started this YouTube channel because I was just in so much like pain and I was so distraught like I needed an outlet I needed something to help me not think about what was going on so I started making videos about sneakers and even though I bought this shoe after she passed it really helps remind me of her which I appreciate and because of that this shoe is just really sentimental to me next up is some modern Jordan brand performance basketball sneakers starting things off we've got the Jordan Superfly 2017 this is one of the first two shoes to release with react cushioning I believe this was worn by Blake Griffin and it's not a bad shoe overall I just really don't like this colorway at all like huge thank you to Jordan brand for giving me this shoe but not one that I'd rock off the court. Next up is another shoe that I got from Jordan Brand, which is the Air Jordan 32 Low. The Jordan 32 Low and the 32 are actually both pretty excellent performers. I've gotta say, it is definitely a heavier shoe, but it still feels great on foot. I also have another Air Jordan 32, this time around in the Gatorade colorway, also gifted by Jordan Brand. Out of the two, this is definitely my favorite. I love the white, orange, and black look. I really dig these orange accents underneath the fins. I think that's dope. I also really like the outsole and how it transitions from like translucent blue to orange. I think that's a really nice touch. I actually have yet to wear this one on court, but I'm definitely gonna break it out sooner than later. Next up is a Westbrook 0.1 in his OKC colors. As with most modern Jordan performance sneakers, it is really great on court. However, this shoe does fit very, very tight and it takes some time to break in. And then rounding off the Jordan performance section, I've got one last pair of Westbrook 0.1s. Now this pair is definitely special because this pair was customized by Jew working on projects. He's this awesome artist who works for Jordan brand and I think he just got his own signature shoe, which I think is awesome, congrats to him. But you guys might remember him as the the guy who painted on the Levi's 4s for the Jordan brand campaign. It's that ice cream truck, man. Like, I don't understand. It's nine o'clock at night. Every time I film at nine, it's just, it's there. And the reason this one's so special, besides the fact that he actually did it for me, is the fact that he actually did the exact same custom on my pair that he did for Russell Westbrook. And according to him, I'm the only other person besides Russell Westbrook to get this exact Why Not custom on their shoes. When he told me that, I flipped out because that's so cool. I've got like a one of two custom. It's crazy. Now moving over to the Converse side of things, I've got three pairs of Chucks. The first is this navy blue pair of Flyknit Chucks. There's like so many stories behind each pair of shoes but if I tell all of them I'm never gonna be able to get through all of them but uh this one's pretty crazy so let me tell you guys this one so sneaker talk actually works pretty closely with Converse Canada and they were doing this really cool event in New York City where they flew around a bunch of influencers like over top of Manhattan and like I'm not talking about planes like these were open-sided helicopters so we were strapped in and leaning out the side of the helicopter like taking really cool on feed shots but this is the pair of shoes that they actually hooked me up with and I've got to say it's an extremely comfortable pair of chucks you've got the lunar lawn insole and the flying upper this is by far the most comfortable pair of chucks I've ever worn now 
Next up, I've got a pair of Looney Tune Chuck Highs that I got from Warner Brothers. And even though I'm not a huge Looney Tunes fan, like yeah, I grew up with it, but I never really got into it. I still think it's a really cool sneaker. And then finally, rounding out the Converse, I've got a pair from the recently released Art of a Champion collection, the Kevin McHale Fast Break High. There's a really cool story behind this sneaker, and I do actually really like the colorway. However, I've got to be honest, I'm a Sixers fan, and we're not really too happy with the Celtics right now, so this is not a pair I'm going to be rocking too often. Definitely a dope shoe, though. That's just my own personal bias. Next up, I've got three pairs of Air Forces, which is actually less than I expected. Starting things off, we've got the SF AF1 Mids. This is the Ivory Mars colorway, I think. I don't remember exactly. Out of all the SF AF1 Mids to drop, I think this is one of my favorite colorways just because it's so clean and simple. Next up is a pair of SF AF1 Highs. Really awesome shoe. I love the colorway. I just wish this colorway had a paracord and not two of these flat straps because the paracord looks so dope on this shoe. One problem is this shoe is just so high, I just haven't had a chance to wear it that much. And finally, rounding off the Air Force Ones, we've got the Nike Connect NYC Air Force One Low. From a distance, this shoe just looks like a white Air Force One, and to be fair, it pretty much just is. The leather's a little bit nicer, and it's got the silver line around the swoosh, but the main difference between this pair and regular AF1 Lows is that it actually has this Nike Connect chip in the heel. This chip actually connected to the Nike Sneakers app, and if you own this pair of shoes, they do a monthly drop where you could have a chance to buy an exclusive pair of sneakers that no one else could grab unless they had this shoe. They only ran this program for three months, and so only had three drops, and two out of the three drops were total garbage. The only drop that was worth it was the Animal Pack Air Maxes that they dropped when they first did this, but the idea of a connected shoe is cool in theory. Next up, we've got some of my Pumas, and I've got to be honest, all the pairs I have right now are recent pickups. The first is the Puma Hybrid Rocket Runner. It's not a bad looking shoe, and it does perform pretty well. The one thing that kind of bothers me about this sneaker is these sort of like red and white pods on the heel kind of remind me of Zitz a little bit. Not a huge fan of that, but not a bad shoe. Next up is the Puma Game Restart RSOs. This shoe is covered in a gray static pattern, which I think it looks really nice. And from a distance, it looks more like a gray shoe than like sort of a black, white, and gray shoe, which I think is really cool. Continuing on, we've got another Puma RSO, this time in the white, red, blue, I guess primary color colorway. Super clean shoe, huge thank you to Puma for sending this sneaker my way. Still haven't gotten a chance to wear it yet, but one day soon I will. And then rounding off the Puma section, we've got a shoe that I honestly think could be one of my favorite releases of the year the Puma Thunder Spectra. Puma knocked it out of the park with this shoe. I think the colorway, the fit, the materials, everything about it is excellent. This has quickly become one of my most worn shoes of the entire year, and I think this is a really good indication of where Puma's going and how they're gonna get themselves back into the game. Now getting into some Adidas lifestyle sneakers, we've got the Adidas Boost You Wear Level 1. Pretty comfortable shoe, the look is definitely out there. If you're not a fan of the look, then definitely not for you, but if you like the way it looks and you like a really cushy ride, this is not a bad sneaker to go with. Next up, we've got the Adidas Pro Fear, which is inspired by 90s style. It's also weirdly heavy. I don't really understand why it's so heavy. I guess it's just like super chunky midsole, but it's heavy. This next shoe was just sent to me by Adidas in this crazy briefcase. If you guys haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. But here it is, the Adidas Alpha Bounce Instinct. This is like the second or third generation of the Alpha Bounce. It's got a full bounce midsole, which I think feels great. It's sort of being marketed as a runner, but I think it's more of a lifestyle sneaker. Like, I wouldn't be too comfortable running in this shoe. I really like the way this shoe looks, but I know a lot of people that don't. Next up is another lifestyle shoe based on a 90s runner, the Adidas Future Pacer. I was genuinely surprised by how many people dislike this shoe in the comment section of my review. I mean, it was never a shoe that I was in love with, but I do kind of like the Y3 vibes. Next is the Adidas Sobakov, which is inspired by modern soccer culture. A really cool shoe if you're into the sort of indoor soccer vibe. Following that, we've got another new silhouette from Adidas this year, the Adidas Young One. This shoe had a surprising amount of hype and sold out relatively quickly. To be honest, I still haven't worn it yet, but I think it's a really nice looking shoe overall. Next up, we've got the PODs. The first pair that I have is the launch colorway. The story behind this shoe is insane. Adidas actually put my name up on a billboard and asked me to go pick up this pair from the Adidas Soho store. And the next day, they flew me out to London for this crazy POD launch event. I got to meet Pharrell, which was crazy. I got to design my own shoe, which was even crazier. And then there was this private Migos concert, which Pharrell also performed at. Like an overall just insane experience. Huge thank you to Adidas for just having me involved in that entire event. Absolutely crazy. But obviously the highlight of the entire event was the POD. And I've got to say, I genuinely like this shoe. I think it's a really comfortable sneaker and a really good looking sneaker at that. And then the next POD is really exciting because this POD is actually a friends and family exclusive. Adidas sent me this pair after the event and I actually saw it for the first time on Pharrell's feet. The shoe came with a sample tag that also said friends and family. It's got a sample tag on the inside of the sneaker and then also confidential written on the bottom of it, which I think is super cool. Obviously, this isn't actually a sample, but it is a very limited friends and family pair. But seriously, huge thank you to everyone at Adidas. You guys have been treating me like crazy well. Now moving on to the NMDs. I actually used to have a lot more pairs, but I just ended up getting rid of them over time. The first pair that I have is the NMD High Winter. 
Um, I'm just really not a fan of this shoe. I hate the ankle collar. I'm not a fan of the way it looks. Uh, I don't know. Next up is one of the original R1 mesh colorways, this gray and red colorway. This is a pair that I've worn so much that the right shoe actually has holes all through the toe. I still wear it. I still think it's a great shoe. I just really still love the NMD line. And then finally, rounding off my NMDs, I've got the Pharrell NMD Trail from the Holy Pack. Out of the four colorways that released in the Holy Pack, this is definitely my favorite, and to my knowledge, it might actually be the most limited. I've worn this pair a couple times, but obviously because it's a white pair of shoes, I have to clean it up all the time. I guess that's the downside of owning this pair, but it's really not that bad at the end of the day. Next up, getting into the Nike lifestyle side of things, we've got my last remaining pair of Roshis. Back around the end of college, the hype around Roshis was insane. You couldn't buy a pair anywhere, and a lot of colorways were going for crazy money. It was the exact same thing that happened to the Ultra Boost and the NMDs. They were extremely hyped. All the colorways were going for crazy money. This is the Flyknit Beethoven colorway, and I think at the time, I, I think I got it for retail. Pretty sure I did. And of course, back when these were dropping, Kanye was still with Nike and he had just dropped his Yeezy 2s. And so Nike released a limited edition, not officially Kanye, but sort of a Yeezy inspired colorway of the Roshi. Next up is a gray and gum pair of the Air Max 1s. It's a really great shoe. It's super simple. It's really easy to rock. I pretty much just wear it to the grocery store though. Next up is a pair of Air Max 90s customized by my friend Customizer Depot on Instagram. He did this really awesome painted marble midsole, which I think looks great. He also added a black swoosh and a black heel counter. Definitely one of his more simple customs, but by far one of the cleanest. And finally, rounding off my Air Maxes, I've got the Air Max 90 in the OG infrared colorway. I got this pair when it last retroed, which I think was 2015. And as you guys can tell, I've worn it a lot. It's like super yellow and super beat up, but I have a lot of memories with this shoe. I wore it on my trip to the Philippines and then to visit my family in Malaysia. Colorway wise, it's a really great looking shoe. And of course, it's got a lot of memories behind it. So one of my favorites. Continuing on with things, we've got some dad shoes. The first of which is the M2K Techno. This is sort of like the Monarch 2.0. And so far, it's only come in women's sizes. Not as big of a fan of this shoe as I thought I was going to be. And that's the reason I haven't done a review or really given this shoe any press. But I like that Nike is breathing some more life back into the Monarch line. Speaking of the king of dad shoes, here it is. I've got my size in this white and blue and silver colorway. This shoe retails for like 50 bucks. It's actually actually insanely comfortable. No reason to hate on the shoe. If you're a dad, you actually probably have a pair of this. And if you're not, and you don't like it, just don't buy it. It's it's like not a bad shoe, especially not for the price. Following that up, I've got the Nike Epic React in triple white. One of Nike's most comfortable shoes. It's got a super breathable fly knit upper, an extremely comfortable React midsole, and it's a great shoe to run in. A lot of people have been calling this shoe shoe of the year already, which I think is kind of crazy. I do think it's an excellent sneaker, and you guys probably already know what it is. It's the Nike React Element 87. I got this guy in the sale colorway, and I think it's a great shoe overall. I love the translucent upper, so you can change the entire look of the shoe by just changing your socks. The React midsole is really soft and actually a lot softer than the Epic React. And overall, there's not a lot to dislike about this shoe. I think it's an awesome sneaker. Shoe of the year, I'm not sure yet, but I do think it's a strong competitor. And finally, rounding off the Nike lifestyle sneakers, we've got one of my favorite sneakers in my entire collection, the Off-White Presto. I've honestly worn this shoe to the ground, like it's pretty beat up. And that's unfortunate because now this shoe is worth stupid money and I can't buy another pair. But honestly, it's insanely comfortable. I love the way this shoe looks. And this is like definitely my like, maybe second or third favorite shoe in my entire collection. It's just a perfect shoe, and if I can get the triple black colorway, even if I have to pay resale, I might have to do it. I didn't realize this video was gonna take like four hours to film, but I'm like three and a half hours into it, and I'm not even close to being done. <sighs> Man. Moving into the Adidas running category, I've got two of the AM collection. I've got the AM4LA and the AM4NYC. The cool thing about these sneakers is that they're both specifically optimized for the terrain of each area, but they're both super comfortable and they're both excellent running shoes. Next up, we've got about 10 pairs of probably my second favorite shoe of all time, the Adidas Ultra Boost. Now this time last year I probably had double this amount of pairs because I just kept buying them and buying them and buying them. This year I've been able to exercise a little bit more restraint and I've been able to hold myself back and get rid of some pairs but I still have a lot of pairs. So I'm just gonna rapid fire these guys off because there's a lot of them. First up, we've got the fifth anniversary Ultra Boost 4.0 in this black and 3M colorway. It's also got yellow lace tips, which I think are pretty cool. Next up, we've got one of my most worn pairs, the Ultra Boost 2.0 3M in black. Not a huge fan of the knit pattern, but I think the 3M on the upper is dope. Next up is the Cookies and Cream Ultra Boost 4.0. Kinda wish the cage was black because it just stands out a little bit too much as a white cage, but I still like the shoe overall. I've also got the Triple Black 3.0, which I don't like as much as the Triple Black 1.0, but it's probably the most like 
actually black ultra boost other than the 1.0 the other triple black ultra boosts have like a lot of like white specs and like weird different shades of gray in them which i don't get next up we've got one of my favorite pairs the burgundy 3.0s which a lot of people have said looks kind of like raw meat and i i guess i agree following that up i've got two different pairs of the parlay ultra boost one 3.0 and one 4.0 both of these shoes incorporate recycled ocean plastic in the upper which i think is really cool next is the my adidas ultra boost 2.0 with this black and rainbow colorway i got the shoe back when my adidas ultra boosts were like super limited and really hard to get. Now the Ultra Boost My Adidas option is standard on the Adidas website, so this really isn't anything special. Next is my first pair of Ultra Boosts ever and probably my favorite, the 3M 1.0. I've worn this shoe to the ground and I actually had two pairs, one of which I returned, which was a huge mistake. This shoe is just so dope and I'm never gonna get rid of it even though it smells awful and it's pretty much like worn all the way out. There's just a lot of good memories with the shoe and I love the way it looks. And then finally, the last Ultra Boost still in my collection is the Kith Aspen Ultra Boost Mid. This was the first Ultra Boost Mid to drop and I got super lucky to actually win the Kith raffle for these guys. I messed up while entering so I actually got a half size up instead of my true size, but it's still one of my favorite pairs and it still fits great. So now moving on to Yeezys, I actually only have like four pairs left over. I had a lot more, but I just needed to sell them because I was never wearing them. The first pair that I have is the Blue Tint 350 V2. And even though this isn't my favorite colorways of the 350s or the 350 v2s I bought my girlfriend a pair and we matched and so I can't really get rid of this pair. Jordan, if you're watching this, it's not that I don't like it, it's just it's not my favorite colorway. The next shoe is actually one of my favorite 350 V2 colorways, the 350 V2 in the Black Friday black and red. I got this shoe on the day of release from a friend of mine that worked at Champs, got it for 500 I think, which at the time wasn't bad. And since then the price has skyrocketed and I've been wearing this shoe like a beater, so I don't think it's gonna command the prices that it could've if I just left it in the box. But honestly, I never see myself getting rid of this pair, so I'm glad that I've been able to wear it so much. Next is actually one of my favorite Yeezys that I've ever owned, the Yeezy 700 Wave Runner. I remember when I first pre-ordered these last year, a lot of people were hating on me, saying that they were trash, they were garbage, and now look at you guys, you guys all love this shoe. And finally, rounding off my Yeezy collection is the 750s in the chocolate colorway. I got super lucky with this pair on the Confirmed app, and yes, this is probably the most ugh looking Yeezy, but I still love the way the sneaker looks, and this is actually one of the only 750s with this really nice, soft, deconstructed upper. And now, rounding off my Adidas collection with my favorite pair of Adidas sneakers that I own, the Adidas Futurecraft 4D. I wear this shoe like every other day. I probably wear it three to four times a week. I love how this shoe looks. I love how breathable it is, especially when you take out the insole and the air kind of comes up through the midsole up into the bottom of your foot. You guys know I'm an industrial designer and as an industrial designer, I've worked a lot with 3D printing, especially at my previous jobs. And this shoe is just such a cool look into the future. I just love this sneaker. And to be honest, with the amount that I've actually worn this shoe, I'm just so surprised with how durable it is. Now moving into my last category of sneakers, my Retro Jordans. We'll go down in order from 13s to 1s. So starting things off with my only pair of 13s, the Air Jordan 13 History of Flight. This sneaker used to be a highly coveted, super limited sneaker, and then Jordan Brand released it as a GR, which is the pair that I have. But I still like the sneaker nonetheless, and shout out to Jordan Brand for sending me this sneaker early. Unfortunately, I don't have any 12s at the moment, so moving down to the Air Jordan 11, we've got the the Air Jordan 11 Low IE. I don't love this shoe, and to be honest, I haven't worn it yet. I've just never been a fan of the Jordan 11 IEs. Next is my favorite colorway of Air Jordan 11s, the Air Jordan 11 Low Bread. Back in 2012, I missed out on the last Bread Retro, and that was a pair that I really, really wanted. So when they released the Low Top version, I grabbed it as a consolation prize, and I've definitely worn this shoe a lot. Next is another pair of Jordan 11 Lows, the Jordan 11 Low Cool Gray. The Cool Gray colorway is another one of those super popular Air Jordan 11 colorways. Same sort of situation with this pair as the Bread 11 Lows, I wasn't able to grab the high top version, so instead I grabbed the low top version, and I haven't been disappointed. And to be honest, I haven't worn it much, but I still think it's a great shoe. Next up, we've got the Air Jordan 11 Wind Like 96. This is actually another pair that was gifted to me by Jordan Brand a little bit early. I actually went to an event where they also gave me the Air Jordan 32 Lows. Really clean shoe, I love the color red, and also another case of when there was only a PE version of the shoe, everyone wanted it, and now that it's released, it's just not as hyped as it used to be. And finally, rounding off my 11s, we've got the Air Jordan 11 7210. This shoe came out to pay homage to the Bulls 72 and 10 record, and ironically, it released during the season that the Warriors actually beat that record with 73 and nine wins. So kind of a funny story there, but I love the fact that they use tumbled leather on the upper rather than nubuck. I think it's a really nice looking shoe. Next up, we've got the Air Jordan 6s in the Gatorade colorway. This was actually another pair that was gifted to me by Jordan Brand in this crazy like holiday package. As of right now, this is my only pair of 6s 
is. I think it's a really clean looking shoe and one that I should probably wear more often. Continuing right along to my Air Jordan 4s, the first pair that I have is the Air Jordan 4 Reverse Motorsport. The leather quality on this shoe also isn't bad. It's actually pretty soft and sort of has a light tumble texture. Next up is a classic, the White Cement Air Jordan 4. This is the newest retro of the White Cement Air Jordan 4 and it also comes with the coveted Nike Air branding. I know by now I've said this a lot, but this has got to be one of my favorite pairs in the collection, at least in the Jordan retros. It's just a super classic colorway. It goes with everything. I love this shoe. Following that up, we've got a recent release, the Travis Scott Air Jordan 4. This is a Houston themed colorway with some Travis Scott detailing throughout the sneaker. Even though I'm not a huge fan of baby blue, I still love the way the shoe looks. I love the red accents inside the sneaker. The one sort of downside of this shoe is that the nubuck on the toe creases like almost instantly. But other than that, one of my favorite pickups of the year so far. And finally, rounding off my Air Jordan 4s, we've got the blue Levi's Air Jordan 4. This is the original Levi's Air Jordan 4 colorway that dropped back in January, I believe. Out of the three colors, colorways that have dropped, this is definitely my favorite, and I'm not just saying that because I couldn't get the other two colorways. I genuinely like this colorway more. To be fair, you can't really wear this shoe with a pair of blue jeans, but I still love it nonetheless. Moving on to the Air Jordan 3s, we've got the Air Jordan 3 True Blue. This colorway is really clean, and it's also got the classic Nike Air branding on the heel tab. However, on this retro, the leather is total crap, and it actually creases on the toe and digs into your feet. At least for me, this shoe is unbelievably painful, so I've only been able to wear it like once or twice. It sucks though, because I love the colorway. I just wish the leather wasn't so bad quality. Following that up, we've got the recent release Air Jordan 3 Katrina. This is another one of those shoes that had a super limited edition and then Jordan Brand released it a couple years later as a GR. I personally really love this colorway, however I did kind of screw it up because I wore it to Warp Tour and it's just super dusty at Warp Tour. So the entire shoe is covered in like this thick layer of New Jersey dust, which is the worst kind of dust. But I'll hit this guy with some rejuvenator and we'll be good to go. The next shoe up is another contender for sneaker of the year, the Black Cement Air Jordan 3s. This is my favorite Air Jordan 3 3 colorway by a long shot. This retro has the Nike Air branding on the heel and the leather quality isn't bad. It's not great, but it's not terrible. But I mean, if you're a Jordan lover, this shoe is definitely a must. And rounding off the Air Jordan 3s, I've got the Air Jordan 3 JTH. This pair was debuted on Justin Timberlake's feet at the Super Bowl, and I got super lucky to pick up a pair in Times Square. Unfortunately, it wasn't my size, so I sold that pair and then actually bought this pair. I actually grabbed this pair from another YouTuber called The Collects. Super nice guy, and I'm really excited to have this pair in my collection. Now moving on to my favorite silhouette of all time, the Air Jordan 1. This first shoe is a different take on the silhouette. It's the Flyknit Air Jordan 1. A lot of people really hated this shoe because they didn't like the fact that the OG Jordan was kind of being switched up in this weird way. And I get it, but I've got to be honest, this Flyknit Jordan 1 is extremely comfortable. It's definitely not my favorite, but I don't dislike the shoe either. Following that up, we've got a New York style colorway, the Air Jordan 1 Wheat. This shoe has a very Timberland vibe to it. However, I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't wear this out in the snow. And the reason for that is it's actually got some pretty nice suede on the upper and you definitely ruin it if you got it wet. Next up is a pair that dropped for All-Star Weekend, the Air Jordan 1 City of Flight. This is a surprisingly clean Air Jordan 1 colorway. Like I said in my review though, I wish the entire swoosh was gold and not just this outline around it. I've also got the Metallic Navy Air Jordan 1s. This is a very underrated OG colorway and probably one of my most worn shoes from last year. I think it's great and I'm not mad you guys are sleeping on it because I got it for half price. Another shoe I picked up this year is the Air Jordan 1 Homage to Home. I do like this shoe, but to be honest, I think it was a better concept on paper than in execution. I really like the way it looks on a shelf, but when you actually wear it, it kind of has this weird look to it. And another thing too, because of the seam down the middle, it creases really weirdly on the toe. Next up is another one of my favorite releases of the year. I mean, I've been saying that a lot, but there really have been like a lot of really, really good releases the bread toe ones. I don't actually know why I've unlaced this shoe because I've already worn it, but regardless, this is a really nice looking sneaker. It's like a different take on the black toes, except obviously you've got red on the toe instead of white. Extremely clean and one of my favorite non-OG Air Jordan 1 colorways. Speaking of the black toe ones, I've got the 2016 Retro, another amazingly clean sneaker. And as I'm probably gonna say for the rest of the Air Jordan ones that I have, you can't really go wrong with red, white, and black. Now that I'm looking at this guy in hand again, I think I might like the bread toes better. Next up is a pair of shoes that I still haven't laced up yet. The top three Air Jordan 1s. This is a combination of the Royal ones, the Bread ones, and of course the Chicago ones. It's a really interesting sort of what the concept, and I think it came out pretty well. To be honest though, I don't think I like it as much as some of the more normal colorways. Following that up, we've got a great release from this year, the Shadow ones. This is part of that sort of Bread, Royal, and Shadow trifecta. One of the shoes that every Jordan 1 collector needs to have in their collection, and this latest retro doesn't disappoint. The leather on this shoe is pretty nice. It's super easy to wear. In fact, I actually doubled up on this shoe as well. As you'd expect, I also have the Royal ones from 2017. Same deal, incredible sneaker, a must have, and of course I've doubled up on this pair as well. So this next shoe is probably my favorite shoe of all time, 
and that of course is the Bread Ones. This is no doubt one of the best Jordans to ever release. It's an absolute must have for any Jordan head. This colorway is so classic and so clean and you guys already know I doubled up on this pair as well. Moving forward we've got the one that started it all, the Air Jordan 1 Chicago. This is the 2015 Retro and I've got to be honest I haven't been ballsy enough to wear this too much. I bought this shoe for resale maybe six months after it came out and it was one of the first shoes that I really spent a lot of money on for resale so I was always a little hesitant to wear it because I just didn't want to mess it up and again like I said I just haven't worn it that much and I think the only places I've worn it are Jordan brand events. That's kind of sad because it's such a beautiful sneaker but I'm definitely going to put this more heavily into the rotation. This next shoe has actually been considered like the standard of quality on Air Jordan 1's. I'm sure you guys know what it is. It's the Shattered Backboard Air Jordan 1. As you guys know the leather quality on this shoe is excellent. It's really nicely made. I always knew the shoe was limited and relatively hyped like when it first came out resale was like three four hundred dollars or at least that's what I paid for it but I didn't realize how high this resale was actually going to go but absolutely one of my favorite shoes in my collection and definitely will not be leaving anytime soon. Now moving on to the final three shoes in my collection and if you guys know my videos at all you probably know what shoes have been missing in this collection. Of course it's the Off-White Jordan 1s. I'm extremely lucky to be able to own each one of these pairs and I got each one of them a different way. The Off-White UNC 1s were a recent release and I actually was able to have this pair delivered to me at the airport. A friend of mine that I met through doing custom sneakers actually hit on the Nike sneakers app in my size which wasn't his size. So I bought them from him for resale. To be fair I bought them like the day they dropped so the resale is like double what it is now so I definitely overpaid but he delivered them to the airport. I was able to get them basically as soon as they came out the day that they were shipped and it's an awesome sneaker. And even though I paid a lot, which hurts, this is definitely the most expensive shoe I've ever bought, I still love this sneaker. The triple white European exclusive I actually got for free from my friends over at Bump. It's unfortunately an 11 and a half, which means there's no way I can possibly even come close to fitting this shoe. But if you guys want an 11 and a half and want to trade for a size 9, 8 and a half, 9 and a half, let me know. I haven't had any luck so far though, so I'm not holding my breath. But until I'm able to find a pair in my size, I'm going to hold on to the size 11 and a half because honestly, it's a really dope shoe. And then finally, the last shoe in my collection, which is by far my biggest grail that I've ever owned, the Off-White Chicago Air Jordan 1. Now yes, the shoe is hyped and yes, it goes for a lot of money, but that's not the reason the shoe is my grail. If you guys have been following me for a while, you probably have heard the story of how I got these shoes like a million times. But if you haven't, let me fill you in. So basically, what happened was I won a contest to go meet Virgil Abloh and the way you enter is to actually write a 300 word essay on design and why you think you deserve to be able to talk to Virgil Abloh and somehow I got super lucky I was one of the 10 people to actually win the contest and of course being a Nike event you had the chance to actually buy the shoes before they came out they didn't actually tell you which one of the off-white collection you were gonna get you actually got this sheet and had to number which ones you wanted in order and then what Nike would do is actually take your numbered list and find the closest shoe to your number one that they possibly could in your size so I got unbelievably lucky because they had an off-white Jordan one pretty close to my size I think it was a half size down so I got this pair for retail and then when I actually got a chance to meet with Virgil I had him sign it and that was like the coolest thing ever not only did he sign it but we talked about design for like 10 minutes it was an incredible experience if you guys want to check out that vlog make sure to do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen but that right there is why my signed pair of the Chicago off-white ones is my favorite pair in my entire collection but guys after like four and a half hours of filming that finally wraps it up I can finally go to bed but before I do that, don't forget to check out the link at the top of the description to see what shoes I have for sale on my website. Like I said, I'm trying to get rid of 60% of my collection, so there's going to be a lot of sneakers up for sale. But that about wraps it up for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know which one of these sneakers is your favorite and why. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.